In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to create the column that you can see here. We're going to look at a variety of techniques. In particular, we're going to look at how you can manually create fluted and spiral layouts without the use of a gadget. We're also going to look at how you can combine 2D, 2.5D designs with 3D, where we'll look at wrapping components. So let's go to File, Close. So let's start by creating a new file. So here we're going to specify a rotary job. The length that I'm using is 18 inches, diameter 2.5. Z0 position, we're going to make that in the cylinder axis. XY datum position, the lower left hand corner. And we need to specify our orientation. So here we're going to go along the X axis where we'll wrap in the Y values. And then we could simply go ahead, select a modeling resolution. In this case, I'm going to go very high. And then we'll go ahead and press OK. So we're going to start by dividing up our job space or our column uh, to create sections for various applications. For example, I want to apply tabs to either end of our job to help us remove uh, our final finished cutout from our stock material. I also want to look at adding in coves for decoration, uh, having a section to create a fluted pattern, uh, and then areas to add clip art where we're going to wrap it around our column. So to help me create these sections, I'm going to look at using guides to divide up my column uh, or my job space. So to create guides, you can simply pull on the left rule or the right or the top ruler up here so at the top if you pull down that'll give you a horizontal guide right click and give you some information about the guide here I'm just going to delete it uh, the reason for that is that I want to create a vertical guide so I'm going to look at using the left rule here drag a guide out and we can see uh, that's uh, being brought into my job there is a number next to it it's telling me where it stands uh, within our x-axis. So here it's currently at zero. So I'm just going to shift that over half an inch, okay? And I can see there that is at half an inch, so I'm just going to let go of my left mouse key to drop that in place. Then what I'd like to do is create subsequent guides uh, relative to this guide that we've just put in there. So to do that, I'm going to right click on the guide. I'm going to use this option here to create a new parallel guide relative to our current guide, whereby we're going to look at selecting the new guide. Here we simply set um, our offset from our original guide in here and so I could go and put in another guide that is half an inch um, relative to our last one and then I could put in more values to enter in more guides. So I'm just going to do that. So my next offset value is going to be 5 inches, create new guide, then half an inch, create new guide, and you can see these guides are popping up there. Um, and then from half an inch after the 5 inches, I want to create 2 inches, create guide, then 1 inch, create guide, 7 inches, create new guide, and then the final one is going to be 1 inch, create new guide and then we'll simply close out there. So here I have all of the guides in place for the various sections that I'm going to create within my design. And so each one of these sections will make a little bit more sense as we build up our design. So we're going to start by drawing in our vectors that represent the tabs for our cutout and some coves that I'd like to apply for decoration. So to keep my file organized, we're going to go to our layers bar at the top here. When we do a rotary setup, we're automatically provided with a bounding box layer. Okay, now I don't need that in this case, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that and also look at deleting that data. 
Go back to my layers bar and for layer one I'm going to change the name of that. We're going to call this one tabs. Make that the active layer. Now I'm going to draw vectors that represent those tabs. So here we're going to use the polyline tool. I'm simply going to snap to the first guide that we created and just follow it along down the y-axis to the bottom. Snap to the bottom there, click to um, accept that and I'm going to press spacebar to start a new line. I'm going to go over to this side here snap to the top, follow the guide down, snap to the bottom and then simply right click to come out of the poly line there and there is that line there. So I'm going to use these two vectors along with the profile toolpath to basically cut in uh, to create my tab. Next up I want to create some vectors that represent some coves that I'd like to apply as part of decoration for my column. So into our layers tab we're going to add in a new layer. We're going to call this layer coves and then simply uh, click out there make sure that is the active layer so we can see it's bold so I know it's the active layer and now we could go back in and draw a polyline. Here I'm going to snap to this guide here to the bottom there spacebar to accept that and then we'll do the same for this one here and then we'll snap to that point there, press in spacebar to accept that and then we can close out of that form and there we have our vectors that represent our cove. So with these vectors I'd look at applying a profile toolpath using something like a v-bit to create some decoration in there. So now what I'd like to do is create a series of vectors that I'd like to put into this section of our design here. So when I created the guys I did so knowing that it is 5 inches wide and the reason for that is that I'd like to create a series of horizontal lines um, in order for us to use the fluting toolpath to create some decorative uh, fluted elements for this section of our column. So just to help me out here, I'm just going to undraw the visibility of our guide. So we're just looking at this section here. And now I'm going to show you how we can create um, a set of lines that are evenly spaced around our column um, for our fluted layout. Now if you had Vcov Pro or Aspire, you could auto create your fluted vectors by simply going to your gadgets, using the wrapping option option and selecting the fluting layout tool and that will guide you to creating um, your vectors for the fluted part that you wanted to create. In this case I'm going to show you how you can manually do that. So here I'm going to go over to the polyline tool. I'm going to snap to this point here and I'm going to come out by 4 inches. So I can see there I have a length of 4 inches. I'm going to click to accept that then right click to come out. Now the reason I've gone for 4 inches, uh, this section here is 5 inches wide and I'd like to position this 4 inch uh, line in the middle uh, between each one of those coves so I have a nice um, half inch space between each one of the coves. Right then, so with that vector selected, what I need to do is I need to look at creating copies of that vector, but I'd like to have even spacing. So I'm going to look at using this vector here to help me uh, create the copies with even spacing. So I'm going to hold down shift to select that vector there. Then we're going to look at using this tool here to copy along the vectors. So we're going to use this copy object option here where we're going to specify a distance between our copies. So I'm going to put in a ballpark here of one and a half inches and I'm going to make sure that this force even spacing option is checked so that it will create exact uh, spacing uh, between each one of those copies. 
So once I go ahead and press copy, you'll see that it's created uh, all of the copies there for me. So you can close out of the form. And if we just nudge over here, uh, we can take a look at what we've got. So if we use the measure tool, it's going to measure from this point here to this one here. You can see we've got a distance of 1.5708. And then working my way up, again, you can see that we have an exact um, amount between each one one of those so I know that we've got a uh, perfect even space in between each one of those lines based loosely on the original one and a half inch distance that I specified. Right then, so the idea here is we're basically going to run a fluted toolpath along each one of these vectors. Now, when this is actually wrapped around, remember we are looking at our 2D view as if it's unwrapped, and we can see I have a line here and a line here, and these would essentially lie on top of each other. So I can just look at deleting one of those. I don't need um, uh, two there as they basically land on the same spot. This is basically the seam um, of our wrapped part. And then I'm just going to drag a box from the bottom right upwards to the top left and anything within that box will be selected like so. So I can see all of my copies are selected here, in which case I'm going to right click and use the option here to group those objects. I'm going to take our original vector here and I'm just going to select it and then hit delete on the keyboard to delete it. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our uh, copied vectors, hold down shift, we're going to select um, our cove line here. I'm just going to do a little bit of alignment here. So I'm going to use the align tools and align it to the center of um, our cove line. And then I'm going to align it to the right hand side like so. And then one final thing I need to do is just get that in the middle of our section. I know that this is four inches uh, wide, so I'm going to take that, so I'm going to nudge it over to the right hand side and then simply type in 0 0.5, press enter, that will move that over the in the x-axis by half an inch. So I now have a half inch spacing between this cove and our first uh, fluted lines here and then half an inch at the end of our flute to the next cove there. Right then, so let's just use this option here to zoom active view to our drawing limits. And one final thing I'd like to do just to keep my file organized is to take those fluted vectors, right click and say move to layer, new layer, and we're going to call this one fluted vectors, like so, and go ahead and press OK. And so with our fluted vectors aligned to the center of this space here, I know that when our part is wrapped, we're still going to retain that even space in between each one of those vectors. So let's just switch our guides back on by clicking on this option here. So now I want to focus on this area where I'd like to apply some clip art that will basically wrap around the entire column. So to do that, let's just first off go and add in a new layer and we're going to call this one components. Okay, So this is for any components that I'm going to add in now. Um, and then we're going to go over to our modeling tab. We're going to insert a new level. We're going to rename that level and we're just going to call this one wrapped component. So in here, we're ready to import a piece of clip art that we'd like to wrap around our column. So over to our import option, I'm going to go into my project folder uh, and then we're going to import the shell molding.v3m file and then simply go ahead and press open. Software is going to warn me that um, we currently have an empty model and that our modeling plane will need to be adjusted if we want to avoid um, distortion. So we're going to go and let the software do that. So it's just going to alter our modeling plane. And then if we just tile our windows horizontally, we can see that this is um, our modeling plane here. And here is our component. 
Uh, so let's just maximize the 2D view and then we'll just zoom in to our component. Okay, so I want to rotate this around, so use the rotate tool. I'm going to go in the center and we're going to rotate that 90 degrees like so. Close out. Now what I need to do is I need to size it. So to begin with, I'm just going to go and size that uh, to the height of our Y axis. So I'll just simply type in Y equals, press apply, close out there, and then I can take that and basically roughly position that in place over here. Okay, so it's just above um, our job space there. Okay, so that's roughly in place. Uh, so let's take a look at this in our wrapped view in the 3D view. So I'm just going to rotate this around just so we can check how well uh, this is sitting around our column. Okay, we have a little bit of a seam here. Okay, so to eliminate that, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to alter the size ever so slightly. So we'll use set selected object size, and here I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger than Y. So we're going to make that 7.9. Press apply, and that will eliminate that seam as it's being wrapped around. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So again, if we just to rotate that, I can see I don't have uh, any seam in place. Right then, we'll put that back in Z, uh, and so now we'll look at the next section of our design. Okay, so that is this area here. So here I want to add in some clip art that I'd like to spiral around our column. So let's just maximize our 2D view. Right then, so we're looking at uh, this section here between this guide here and this guide here. And so what I need to do um, in order to create a successful spiral is I need to look at uh, drawing a vector that will essentially wrap around uh, the column. Again, if you are using Recarve Pro or Aspire, you can go to the Gadgets option here. Under Wrapping, you have a Spiral Layout option, and this will auto-create uh, spiral vectors for you to use uh, standalone to spiral around a column or as a guide to uh, position clip art to wrap around your column. Uh, in this case, I'm going to show you how you can manually create um, the spiral vector that you need. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some vector geometry to help us uh, to create the line and angle that I need to follow to create a successful spiral. So what you need to do is you need to go into the drawing tab and then use the draw polyline tool. Now I only want to spiral in this section here. So you need to draw a horizontal line to begin with to represent uh, the length of your spiral. Okay, So here I'm just going to go from here to here. Now if I wanted to create a spiral that was uh, to spiral around the entire job space, I'd do it from here all the way to the end over here. As I said, I only want to spiral in this section here. So I'm going to click here and then snap to this guide here. Okay, so now we need to create another line, okay, and our line needs to go up the Y axis, okay. So here I'm going to go over to our polyline form, I'm going to put in an angle of 90 degrees in there, and then for the length, this is where we specify how many spirals we want. Now, if you wanted to create one spiral, you'd basically put the length as um, the same as your Y your Y length in your job. Okay, now I want to create two spirals to go in this section here. So I'm going to type in Y, okay, so I've got the Y value times and two. So two being how many spirals I want in there. If you wanted three or four, you type in Y times three, Y times four respectively. So I just want to create two spirals, so I'm doing a calculation of Y times two, and then I must finish that with an equals, and that will give me the length that I need there, in which case I can then go ahead and add that point in. And we can see that it's come all the way up here. 
So now I've got my geometry uh, that I need to create my spiral line, I can simply press the space bar uh, to create a new line. And the new line I'm going to create is from the end of the vertical line to the start of the horizontal line that we created. And this is my spiral. So I'd use this vector here to spiral twice around our column within this space here. So at this point I can delete our guide vectors that we used uh, to create our spiral line and now we can look at using this line here uh, with some clip art uh, to create the nice spiral wrap. So again to keep my part organized let's take that vector and say move to layer new layer we're going to call this one uh, spiral vector like so and then go ahead and press OK. So I'm going to make sure that the components layer is the active layer. Shortly we'll be bringing in components uh, that I'm ultimately going to spiral using this spiral vector as a guide. And before I do that, I just need to take two important dimensions to help me size up and rotate my piece of clip art to match that of this spiral vector here. So if we go into the dimensions tool, I'm going to use the length option here. Okay, so we're just going to go and snap to that point here, to this point here, and then that's going to give me um, a length of 17.1971. Then we're going to go and create an angle dimension. So I want to know the angle between here and here. So that way I know how much to rotate my component uh, to get the correct angle for it to spiral. So I'm going to go up the y-axis over to our angle and then here we can see that, that is 24 degrees. Right then, so let's just close out there. So I'm just going to remember this value here, 17.1971. Uh, so for now, um, we'll go over to our clip art tab. I'm going to go to our clip art, and I've got a weaves section here. So here I'm going to look at weave 31. I'm just going to double click to bring that into our job. I go into our modeling tab and um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that on a new level. So I'm going to insert a new level, we're going to rename that level and I'm going to call this spiral component. And then I'm going to take that component and just drop that in there just to keep everything organized. So looking at our component, what I'd like to do is create another copy. So I'm going to press Control and Alt and I'm just going to drag that over somewhere like that, like here. And then I'm going to press V just to flip that vertically uh, to create uh, that orientation. Right then, so with those two, I'm going to take both of them and I'm going to right click and we're going to use the option here to group those components. Okay, now what I'd like to do here is I'd like to rotate that so that it is uh, vertically. So we're going to go and press 9 on the keyboard, 9 again, so it's now standing proud in the Y axis and then we're going to go to our drawing tab. I'm just going to use this option here to set selected object size. I'm going to alter the height and make it the same height uh, as the length of our spiral vector. So here we're going to go with 17.1971, uh, press apply and we can see that that has changed there. Then we can close out and then with that component what I'd like to do is I'd like to rotate that okay, and rotate that around the center uh, and we're going to rotate that negative 24 degrees so that angle that we picked up uh, for our spiral vector. Go ahead and press apply like so and then we could simply close out there. Then what I can do is I can just switch off the dimensions layer. We'll also look at tiling um, our window so that we can see the 3D view also. 
And then we need to position um, our component uh, against our spiral vector. So we're going to take uh, our component there, and if I just zoom in, I'm just going to take that and I'm just going to move it up here so we're roughly in line like so um, and that's pretty much it okay so this is our part now you'll notice that it cuts off here in the 3d view and that's because our part um, is actually coming off of our job space in order for it to spiral around now if we take a look at the flat view we can see what I mean here so we're only seeing exactly what we're seeing there in the 2D view. Now, in order for us to see the rest of our components spiralling around our column uh, we need to go into our modeling tab and look at altering um, something, a property within our level. So if you go to the spiral component level right click you'll see we have the option for wrapping if I select wrapping that will switch that on and that will enable us to view um, our component as it's being spiraled around our column so when I switch on our wrapped view we can see um, those two spirals like so. Okay, so remember if you are creating spiral wraps or anything that comes out um, then you need to switch on the wrapping property of the level to be able to see that. Okay, so that's pretty much um, our spiral wrapped component there. Uh, so now what I'd like to do is I'd like to look at creating two more components that are going to wrap around uh, the ends of our spirals. So we're looking at this guide here and this guide here. So here I'm just going to insert a new level. I'm going to rename this level and I'm just going to call this one wrapped component 2 and then we're going to go to our clip art tab so here we've got um, a section called 3D tabs okay and we've got uh, various different tabs in here um, and you can see that uh, some of these haven't been downloaded so I'm just simply going to right click and use the download option in which case I'll just log in and refresh um, and then that will basically download that for me. Okay, so it's been downloaded. Uh, so now what I can do is I can take that and just simply drag that into my job. And then we'll just go and maximize the 2D view uh, just to position this where we want it. Okay, so before I quickly do that, I'm just going to take our component that was spiraling and I'm just going to snap it to the center of our line so it's uh, running through the center of the spiral there. Then we're going to take that tab and we're going to rotate it. So over to the drawing tab, rotate 90 degrees and then we'll press apply in there and close out. Then we're going to take that tab, I'm just going to take it from the lower center there and just snap that uh, to the center of our guide like so. Uh, and then what I'd like to do is look at altering the Y height of our component. Um, so to do that we're going to use the set size option. So here what I want to make sure that I do is not scale the Z height when I come to uh, stretch that component. So if we take a look um, at the component as it stands in the 3D view. So if we just tile our windows and if we just rotate that around till we find that there. Okay, so you can see we've got it here and I quite like um, the shallow height that we've got there. So I'm going to make sure that auto scale Z is switched off and then I'm just going to take one of those handles and just roughly stretch that around like so. And we can see that being updated here um, in the 3D view. One other thing I'd like to do is I'd like to just alter the width. Okay, so I'm just going to uncheck link XY and then make that three quarters of an inch press apply and we can see it's made uh, the change there 
Okay, at the moment we can see that that is currently uh, adding on our model there. So what I'd like to do is alter this so that it's merging uh, with our spiral component. So if we go to our modeling tab, I'm going to go to the wrapped component level, go to the combine mode and set that to merge. So it blends in with that spiral component. Uh, so that's looking pretty good. Okay, so you can see it's nicely feeding into there uh, with the help of that component being set to merge, well, the level even, not the component. Right then, so we're going to take this component and we're going to create a copy of that using control, uh, using my smart cursor abilities, I'm keeping that in line in X, and then snap into the center of the guide that we've got over here. And so here we can see um, how our part is looking so far. Okay, so I can see I've got a little bit um, of my component coming through uh, past um, our kind of band there. So if I go to the 2D view, um, we're just going to go over here. I'm just going to nudge that over to the right ever so slightly. Um, and then if we just press page down, we can see how that's updated. And we should have cleared that part. So you can see nothing is coming through there. Perfect. So I like uh, the way that that looks. Uh, so now we're pretty much ready to go over to the toolpaths to um, create our cove toolpaths, uh, the fluting toolpaths, and then obviously the 3D machining of our column. So let's switch over to the toolpaths tab. So first off, we want to go into the material setup to check everything um, is going to be how we're going to match it up in terms of our physical setup on our CNC. So diameter working with is two and a half. XY datum position is in the lower left hand corner. Our Z zero, we're making sure we're going to set that uh, from the center of our cylinder. Model position in the material, so this is displaying our model thickness which is on the most outer part of our cylinder. Okay, so I'm going to remember this value uh, for when I come to create my coves and my flutes to alter the starting point. I'm going to look at just 3D machining everything uh, as we see it here and then we'll look at doing the 2D, 2.5D toolpaths afterwards. So this value uh, is worth remembering, so that's 2547. Check over the rapid Z gaps above the material, home and start position uh, are safe and sufficient for what I'm doing uh, and then we could simply go ahead and press OK. So first off, we're going to create some 3D toolpaths. So we're going to use a 3D roughing toolpath to begin with. I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill. And I need to specify my machining limit boundary, in which case I'm going to choose the model boundary. And then we're going to go and give that a machining allowance. So this is a piece of virtual uh, skin that was going to be left on there for our finishing tool um, to get at this just means that the larger tool of the rough and tool path doesn't um, create any chips at our finished surface. Uh, we're going to do that in a Z level strategy where we're going to raster along the X axis and then we could simply go ahead and press calculate. That's going to calculate that for us and then we could go ahead and preview that. Before I do that, I'm just going to put this um, preview into a Canadian maple appearance and then I'm going to go ahead and preview that toolpath. So it'll preview that initially in a flat um, environment and then it will show us the wrapped preview of that toolpath. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So let's close out. Then we're going to do a 3D finish toolpath. So here we're using a smaller tool, an eighth inch ball nose this time. We're going to use the model boundary uh, to limit our toolpath to. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and apply a raster strategy where we're going to raster along the x axis. So we'll make that zero degrees. Call that 3D finish, press calculate. And again, the software is going to calculate that for us as we're working with um, a smaller tool. It has much more um, information to process, so it takes a little bit longer than the roughing toolpath. So let's go and preview that. So 
so that's how our part would look. Okay, so now what I'd like to do is I'd like to look at adding in um, our coves and the flute. So we'll start by looking at the fluted vectors. So we're going to select uh, those vectors there and then we're going to go over, close out the preview toolpath form. We're going to use the fluting toolpath. So here we're going to specify a start depth of 0 0.2547, okay, so that's what we've already took away from the 3D machining. And then we're going to apply a flute depth of an eighth of an inch. Let's specify a tool, so I'm going to use a select option, and I'd like to use a half inch ball nose here. Press OK there, and then we're going to ramp at the start and the end. We're going to have a ramp length of 0 0.5 and we're doing that in a smooth ramp. So now I can go ahead and press calculate and then we could go ahead and preview that toolpath. Okay, so it's going to take a moment to preview that for us uh, and then we can see that simulation like so. Perfect, so I like uh, the way that that looks there. So we can close out and so next we're going to look at our um, cove vectors to create the cove. So I'm just going to undraw our guides there and then we're going to take this vector here, shift and select this vector here and then we're going to go and run a simple profile toolpath. So we're going to use the profile toolpath here and so our start depth here is going to be 0.2547 uh, the cut depth, so we're going to cut down 0.1 of an inch. The tool we're going to use is a 90 degree quarter inch tool, so we'll OK that. We're going to machine on the vectors, uh, and then we'll simply just call that one profile, and then coves, and then simply calculate that. And then we can preview it to see how that looks. It looks pretty good. Okay, so like we've got there, we're going to do a final toolpath now, and that's to basically create uh, our tabs just to help us cut this away from our material block. So taking this vector here and this vector here, we're going to run a profile toolpath. So here we're going to have our start depth at 0 0.2547 in there. Cut depth, ultimately, if I was cutting this um, where we hadn't already cut anything away from the 3D machining, I'd like to cut down half an inch. So I'm going to put in 0 0.5, but then I'm going to minus the 0 0.2547 to give me uh, this value here. So that's how much we're going to cut down from this point here. Uh, we're going to select a tool. So here I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill. Uh, we're going to machine on the vectors there and we're just going to call this one profile tabs and then press calculate and then we'll go ahead and preview that toolpath and then that's what we'll be left with. Okay, so uh, that's pretty good. Now at this stage if I wanted to I'd go ahead and save out those toolpaths in which case I'd use the save option and then choose the appropriate uh, post processor uh, for my rotary machine. So that completes this tutorial. So let's go and save this file. So go to File, Save As, and we're simply just going to call this one column.crb, and you can access that from your project folder.